my beautiful buds. Welcome back to my channel, Sprouts with Joy. My name is Joy, and if you like to talk about plants, you're in the right place. So it is currently the evening. My toddler is in bed and it's finally peaceful. <laughs> And I don't normally like filming in the evenings just because the lighting generally isn't as good. Um, I just love the warmth of the sun and that sort of thing. But hopefully this won't be too bad. But yeah, it's been really rainy all day, so honestly, I'm just here for the cozy evening vibes. But I have been meaning to mount my stag corn fern since I got it like back in February of this year. <laughs> And it just never happened. He's been growing really happily in his little pot here, just his nursery pot. Um, but honestly, he's starting to outgrow it. And I'm really excited to actually display this in the way that I've been meaning to display it in my home rather than just kind of having it in a corner by a window in a pot. <laughs> so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I have a few other things that I'd like to share with you guys as well. I don't know if I'll get to all of it this evening. I, I have a few ideas of where I want to put this guy to, but I, I it might take me a couple days to decide. I'll show you guys at the end of the video where it winds up and stuff, but tonight my goal is to mount this stag corn fern and then there are a couple of plants that I've gotten recently that I just haven't shown you guys yet that I'm super excited about and they both need to be repotted now. So that's my goal for this evening in particular. It's enough of my rambling, let's get to trying to mount the staghorn fern. Okay, so as you can see, I finally got myself a proper potting mat. <laughs> it's about time, <laughs> but I figured it'd be easier with this project to have one. So I have right here, this is just like a piece of cork wood. Um, I got it off of Etsy. Part of me maybe slightly regrets getting this. I got it back in like February. Just because, I don't know, I've been, I've been thinking about it and I kind of wish that I had like a square piece of wood or something to mount my staghorn fern to instead. But honestly, this will suffice just fine and I don't want to waste it because I already got it. It's just part of me is like, oh, I don't know, maybe I would have preferred the other aesthetic. But I think it'll still look nice. So, uh, you know, and I can always mount other stack corn ferns or change it up or whatever in the future so i'm not too worried about it and then right here is my stag horn fern i don't know the specific um species of this stag horn fern or like i know there's different kinds of stag horn ferns because this was just labeled as a stag horn fern um but i like the way that it looks it was i just got it at my local nursery for like eight dollars so honestly pretty good deal and then i also have some sphagnum moss that's damp but not too damp like if you squeeze it a tiny bit of liquid comes out but like not a whole lot and i've got some fishing line over here but hopefully that'll be enough but i think i have some extra somewhere um and then oh i also these are like kind of like tiny little nails and i just used a few of these I just kind of stuck them in the cork in a few different places. It's kind of hard to see, but I just stuck them in the cork um, as just places to act as anchors for the fishing line stuff. So hopefully that makes sense, but I guess you'll see as we do it. I guess we will get started and I might change the angle here and there just to give you guys some different looks, but let's just stick with this for now and see how it goes. So, um, first things first, I think I'm supposed to put a little bit of sphagnum moss down. If I kind of look and figure out exactly where I want to place it, the position for actually hanging it, I ordered it off of Etsy and it, it came um, with kind of a hanger already attached to this top portion here. So obviously that's gonna be the orientation that we're working with. But yeah, I'm just gonna put kind of a bed of moss down. Probably not too thick. This is actually my first time doing it. I've just watched a lot of videos of the process. So I'm hoping that I get it right. And um, if I don't get it right, then, you know, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> I'm gonna see what we're working with. I'm gonna remove some of the soil, but not all of it. Oh man, yeah, this is very wet. 
and kind of root, brown, root bound. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm gonna try to be somewhat gentle, but also not be too afraid. I, I do wanna just kinda, you know, I'm sure that they're pretty tough, but I'm just gonna rip a lot of this open so that it can just lay flat on here as close as I can get it to the cork board, you know what I mean? I am just kind of massaging that soil. Normally I'd try to not bother the roots this much, but when you're mounting these guys, you kind of have to flatten out the soil to my understanding and get them to adapt to a different shape. So, let's see. So if I place them down like this, I mean, that's pretty cool looking already. <laughs> See, I kind of wish I had a bigger piece of cork too, but this is what we're currently working with so far. <sighs> I'm trying to imagine like if it were hanging. I kind of want it to be positioned a little bit more up. So I'm gonna add some more moss underneath. kind of sticking out a little bit more than I'd like him to, but I'm afraid to mess with his roots too, too much. So I might just leave it like that. And now I will go ahead and place some more moss down on top. Kind of hard because the leaves are getting blocked there, but I'll be fairly generous with the moss. I like to reuse my sphagnum moss when possible, and you can just disinfect it by boiling it. Or I've even seen people like use hydrogen peroxide on it too if you're wanting to reuse it, and then rinsing it out totally. So, you know, whatever you want to do, I'm sure both kind of work pretty well. And then I'm probably going to have to get some liquid fertilizer to fertilize this guy. I might just get like a tiny thing of liquid or because I don't really have that much of a need for liquid fertilizer except for my prop boxes if I want to do that. Um, and if I ever get a terrarium, I want to. I've been thinking about making a terrarium, so in that case, I'd also use it for that. And then for this guy, I would definitely want to use some liquid fertilizer on occasion, or at least some sort of plant food, you know? So, let's see. Kind of hard to see because I'm trying to like use the viewfinder <laughs> to see what I'm doing, but it's so small it's hard to know if, I've done, if I'm doing a good job. Okay, I don't know if this angle will be like any better or worse really, but I figured I'd just switch it up in case. And you can't really see very well from the camera angle, but there's some more soil to cover up. So I'm just gonna keep doing what I've been doing. Okay, so I think I want to do maybe a preliminary layer of the fishing line and then go back in with some more moss. So I'm going to go ahead and add, I think, another nail to the top here. Um, and with some of them I was able to stick it in, with others I needed a little bit more force depending on what it was. Um, I don't have my hammer up here with me, so I might just use a nearby blunt object. I think this candle is the best I've got right now, because I don't want to go down to the basement to pick up my hammer. So I'm just going to use this to get it a little bit more in there. There we go. Well, yeah, that's in there. 
It worked. <laughs> Just don't don't laugh at me too hard, okay? I mean, actually, honestly, if you think that's funny, good. I'm glad I made you laugh. So now I've got this fishing line I'm gonna use. I'm just going to tie this fishing line onto one of the nails here. <laughs> Handling fishing line is not very fun. Just reminds me of being like five years old and going fishing with my dad. Um, and trying to tie the fishing lines to the hooks and stuff. I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> so, I'm just gonna kind of go back and forth and kind of all around. And hope that it works. <laughs> So here's what he's currently looking like so far. Pretty fun. Um, I'll need to go back in with a little bit more moss and do like another layer of fishing line. But I think so far that's not bad considering it's my first time doing this ever. Um, but yeah, I would like to make him a bit more secure. And I might experiment with adding some more nails as well. I just added a couple more nails off camera just to preserve battery, but I just added them in strategic places to where I thought they might be helpful for anchor points. So I'm just gonna kind of keep doing what I was doing before over the new moss and just try to go around and keep securing everything as much as I can. All right, to be truthful, I ran out of fishing line, <laughs> but I still wanna use more. I had another pack of fishing line, but I literally can't find it anywhere, which is really frustrating. But I have this just like other clear wire. It's kind of hard to explain what it is, but it's a little bit thicker, but not as flexible. So it's honestly a bit less ideal in my opinion, but I don't have much of a choice. <laughs> So I'm gonna try it and hope that it works okay. <sighs> okay, so it was a little bit more frustrating with that other type of uh, transparent string line, whatever you wanna call it. But I think I managed to get it to work. I just had to hold it a lot more taut and so about it not slipping. So I'm not quite, sure about the staying power of that one. I really wish I had more fishing line. I just could not find mine anywhere. So, um, but I think that he's pretty secure. 
this is the end product so far. Um, he's pretty stuck on there and over time maybe he'll be a little bit more established. Maybe I'll add more fishing line down the line if I feel like I need to. But so far, this is where he's at. And overall, I'm fairly pleased with the result. Okay, as I expected, um, my initial battery ran out, so I got interrupted there. But as I was saying, I can't wait to find a good place for him in my home, and I'll show you guys at the end of the video what that looks like. But I'm gonna clean up this initial mess and get to the other plants and repotting supplies that I need while my initial battery charges, and I'll, I'll be back with you guys in a second. Okay. We're back. So I told you that I had some new plants that I wanted to show you and repot. And I'm very, very excited about both of them because I did not think I would get either of them anytime soon. But here we are. So this right here is a Hoya Velosa and she is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh. So the story behind this plant is there is a local plant shop that opened up oh maybe six months ago and I just had never gotten around to going there because I wasn't really buying plants for a while and you know it's a new business so the hours are pretty irregular because there's you know the only person that works there is the owner and she's working another job but I decided you know what I really want to go out and support her so I figured out a time that they were open and I got there and I was let me tell you, I was honestly really shocked at their selection. Like they had some really awesome things. I was very pleasantly surprised. And among those things, I mean, the owner absolutely loves Hoya and jungle cacti. So she particularly had a good selection of Hoya and jungle cacti. And I just so happened to be kind of trying to collect some more interesting Hoya. And she had one Hoya Velosa. Don't mind the spots because I treated her with a sulfur fungicide treatment when I uh, brought her home. I rinsed most of it off, but there's still a little bit of <laughs> residue left. And that's just as a precaution against flat mites, but I've inspected her thoroughly with a little microscope thing to look for flat mites. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll link a video about it in the cards. Nonetheless, so there's no sign of flat, flat mites. She's very healthy and she has new growth coming in right there. And oh my goodness, like the veining on these leaves is delightful and the undersides are slightly velvety, like slightly fuzzy and soft too. So this is just, mm, I've really found myself most attracted to Hoya with bigger leaves and kind of veiny leaves too. So you can see that the Hoya Velosa has both of those things and I feel like this is just an absolutely gorgeous specimen. I've had her for a few weeks now and I just wanna get her into terracotta so that she can just live in her home. Sometimes I wait longer than that, but I'm kinda of getting impatient <laughs> and I want her to be in the home that I intend her to be in, you know what I mean? And before I change the angle up, I wanna show you the other plant because I'm too excited to not show you the other plant. Um, Look at that. <laughs> Uh, it feels a lot more real talking about it on camera now because it has not felt real till now, but I own a Thai constellation now, a Monstera Thai constellation. Um, this is easily, I think, the most expensive and I guess by extension, most commercially rare plant in my collection, maybe, um, kind of depending on how you want to define all that. But not that that really matters because to be honest, I just think that this plant is beautiful. Like look at how perfect these leaves are. That variegation is stunning. Oh my word. And the leaves are like honestly flawless. Um, hopefully, you know, I could see this sectoral portion getting some browning someday just because that's what they tend to do. But oh my gosh, like, ah! <laughs> This is very exciting to me. Um, I So this was actually a gift from a friend, which is wild. But he, with his job, he has connections with like plants and 
greenhouses and stuff like that. So he was able to get a really, really good deal on this, like basically get it at cost to my understanding. I mean, he knows that I love plants and since he had the opportunity, he was like, yeah, I'll get it for joy. And I'm, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm, I'm honestly so excited about this and I really hope I can do well by this plant. And I, I mean, honestly, I've had a lot of good fortune with Monsteras. I know some people sometimes struggle with slow growth and with rot with these guys, but I will fight tooth and nail to keep this guy happy. So I'm excited. I, ugh, I still have to figure out exactly the perfect spot to put him. I haven't totally decided yet, but we'll figure it out. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and start off with the Hoya Velosa. Some people think that it might also be the same thing as a Hoya Globulosa, I think it is, which I don't really know either way. If you have an opinion, let me know. Um, but honestly, I just am happy to have her. So yeah, I'm not really going up um, in size per se. Like this is like a little bit deeper than what she's currently in. Um, but I think that this is still, this might be like a three and a half inch pot. It's definitely not like a full four inch pot by any means. And this is a three inch nursery pot. Um, but I'm just gonna keep her like fairly low is my plan. So yeah, I don't think that she really needs to be up potted per se. Just, I just wanna give her a more permanent home than what she's currently in. And honestly, like this soil right here, is killer so I just want to preserve that soil as much as possible and be super gentle because she's putting out a new leaf. Ooh, honey is well rooted in there. Look at that. That's great. I love, I love to see that. So yeah, I think that this pot is like a three and a half inch pot. So I'll just fill in a little bit, give her just a tiny bit more room, but like we're barely increasing by like maybe a half inch. So that's good. Good, good, good. simple and straightforward and she looks so cute in her new pot ah! so yes oh my gosh I'm so excited about this plant ah okay and moving on we will get to the Thai constellation so I did take a look at the roots already and I wanted to show you guys <laughs> I did want to show you guys these roots um, I don't like the soil that he's in. I'm pretty sure it's just like pure cocoa peat pretty much. So yeah, but I'm hesitant to mess with the roots too much because you know, I, I don't wanna make him mad, but holy crap. Um, look at how thick and juicy these roots are. He's super well rooted and honestly, pretty close to being very root bound at this point. Look at how beautiful. Oh my gosh. Ah, that's so pretty. Just these roots are so fascinating to me. But yeah, I don't want to bother them too much. So even though I don't like this soil very much, you know, he clearly grew up in this soil. So I'm not going to bother him a whole lot. Um, but I am going to up pot him. Ah, this was the closest size that I could find to what he would need this terracotta pot it might be a little bit big so i'll plant him more shallow but i think it'll be okay i think it's about two inches up from where he's at so it's not that's pretty typical for up potting but sometimes i'm a little bit paranoid about that so i don't know but let's see how he fits oh yes look at that Now I'm just gonna 
backfill the soil as normal. I'm gonna make sure he's centered in pretty well. Yeah, he's good. He will be cozy in there. And I trust that his roots will find their way to the rest of the soil that I'm putting in here. Again, I just, I don't want to mess with him a whole lot, even though I know Monstera roots are super resilient. Um, but obviously this plant is very special. <laughs> so hopefully I don't come to regret that decision, especially because these are two very different soil mixes. So sometimes I hesitate about that. Like if it's two very different soil mixes, then I'll try to remove some of the soil. But at the same time, He's in terracotta. This is De La Tanks, which is super breathable. So honestly, I think that he'll be okay. this turned out look at him doesn't feel real that he's mine at all <laughs> but he is so yes look at that I'm super happy with how both of these turned out and honestly yeah I'm a huge fan of terracotta I do wish that more of my collection could be an ivy main pots if I'm being honest <laughs> because I love her pottery so much and her style is just right up my alley but it's a little bit too expensive for me to make my whole collection that. So terracotta suffices for most of the time for me. So yes, but honestly, if you have any planter recommendations and like pottery, that sort of thing, leave a comment down below. I would love to look into getting some more unique pots at some point, but for now, this works. So I don't wanna end the video here because I want, as I mentioned before, I wanted to show you where I end up putting the staghorn fern in a few days. So I guess we'll just fast forward to that in the future. So uh, yeah, see you in like, I guess from your perspective, two seconds. Hello my friends. It's been a hot minute and that's just largely because I, as you can tell, I, I've had a pretty bad cold. I like completely lost my voice and I've had a really bad cough that has just been lingering. So that just hasn't been really fun. But I, I still wanted to, now that my voice is kind of back, I wanted to show you guys real fast. Um, I've, I've moved some things around, some of my plants, I've done some rearranging. Uh, it's not exactly where I want everything to be, but I wanted to share anyways and kind of give you guys a little taste of, of what I've been doing with my I don't know, plant decor situation, plant arrangements, uh, I don't know. <laughs> so there's just this little table here in the guest bedroom by the south facing window. Um, that's my hospital bag that I've been packing, so don't mind that. Um, but right here, right now it's the morning, so it's not super bright in here. As when it gets the afternoon, that's the west facing window. So when it's the afternoon, it gets really really bright in here um but yeah I just have my mommy and this monstera that needs to be um watered she's a little thirsty so I'm gonna do that today um but yeah I've got we put up floating shelves which is honestly really exciting I've been wanting to do that for forever and then over here that's where my Syngonium Albo is on a plank that I just put it on in a recent video. I moved my um, Alocasia Black Velvet out of that humidity box and put it in here. I think it's kind of cute. Um, eventually I might want to like paint a picture or something to put up there or like just change up the way that the shelves are, but I just kind of use what I had <laughs> in the moment to um, do that. And then over here, of course, is my Monstera Peru, my Rufidophora Tetris Perma, which I've got some pieces propagating, so I'm gonna make a really big full pot and kind of 
my idea is to have it <laughs> kind of take over this wall in a lot of ways. And then over here, uh, this is where I used to have that Monstera, but I moved my philodendron out of that Polens there. And I think that it's really happy, it really likes the light. It's been putting out lots of new leaves. And um, honestly, like this makes this kind of walkway a bit more open, which is nice. Yeah, that's, that's the guest bedroom slash extra plant room because it gets really good light in here. So I put a lot of extra plants in here. In my bedroom, I just wanted to show you, here is my lovely Thai constellation who is putting out a new leaf now. Ah, ah. I'm very excited about that. Um, and then I ended up putting my Epipremnum Panatum Alpo Vergata here, where it gets quite good light from this grow light. Um, and so yeah, hey buddy. I found flat mites on my Hoya obovata, which sucks, but um, as you can see, there's a sulfur treatment on it right now that I've been rotating with. Yeah, that's what's going on right here for now. And of course, I had to show you where I put my staghorn fern. So I've got a Hoya crumbly queen here, a syndapsis tree and moonlight here, and then I ended up just putting in here. This is kind of like the top of the stairs landing area. And this is an east facing window. And I've been wanting to maybe put some more plants up here just because it's right next to an east facing window and I think it's pretty nice. All right, and with that, my voice is honestly really giving out again, so. Um, I think we're gonna just wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for spending some time with me hanging out. I hope that you have a wonderful and blessed day. Bye-bye.